All right, then I will turn it over to the program, which is actually me. <laughs> so um, this is our end of the year celebration and I've put together um, sort of a slide that I'm gonna share with you. So rather than do awards and for individuals, I wanted to recognize what all of you have done, what our club has accomplished this year. Um, first, I wanna thank um, the club officers, President-elect Bryce Baker, um, Josh Shinoda, our former president-elect nominee, and now it's Janet Peters, our immediate past president, Tim Pearson, Secretary Claudia Yakos, Treasurer Lucas Williver, Fundraising Treasurer Jim Crisp, and Satellite Member Director Mike Yakos. Um, so thank you to all of you. Uh, you've been a tremendous support. The amount of meetings that we've had throughout the year, the planning, the troubleshooting, I mean, from, you know, really trying to, to make it still a, a club that felt like a club. We really, we lost a few members this year, but we also gained a few members. But I can tell you there's clubs that are down 50% in their membership. So um, everyone's done a, a great job just sort of keeping it all going and, and coming up with these solutions. Um, also the board of directors this year, Paul Waterstreet, Ryan Garcia, Michelle Thomas, Janet Peters, Andrea Stewart, Michael Doherty, Virginia Oler, Howard Sullivan, and Alma Lozano. So thank you to all of you uh, for being part of the board and, and taking on some of these difficult issues we've had to address. Also a huge thank you to Blake. Our rototeller is, is such a one-stop uh, place for, for information, the links to not just what are we doing, but when and where and who and, and how. Um, Blake has put this together and it's, and, and not just that, but Facebook. Uh, when you put something out on Facebook, like the steak feed, that, that allows the rest of us to turn around and like it and share it and just kind of reach more people. Um, it's just kind of changed how we've, we've done things with the club and, and I think we'll continue to evolve. And Blake, are there other clubs that are using this format now? I don't think there are many clubs that are using, we use DACDB to put together the newsletter. And I, I'm not sure if they're, I don't know for sure, but I don't think there's many clubs that are doing it, but it's, it's great to be able to have something that we can only, not only email out, but also we uh, create a PDF and Andrea Stewart sends that PDF uh, by mail to club members who, uh, don't regularly access club communications by email. So we're covering people uh, two different ways. And it's not just Facebook as well. We've uh, really uh, stepped up our presence on Twitter and on Instagram. So uh, so we're getting the word out there. Uh, we're just, as part of that, just encourage everyone to, to like things when they come out from the club and, and you know share it, especially if we're doing fundraisers. And if you have any ideas on things we can do or, or things that we can uh, use to be able to promote the club even more, you know, let me know. That's wonderful. Yes, thank you. And, and I know that the ones that they're mailing it to are, are not only receiving it, but they're reading it because some of those members have come to purchase stakes or have come to purchase wreaths. So it is keeping them, even though they're not Zooming with us, they're staying connected to us. They've not dropped their membership. They are looking forward to the the meetings that we can be together again. We've got this wonderful food bank that uh, it started out as a food pantry at the high school, right? And now with the pandemic shutting down, you know, the in-person classes has transformed how they do it. Now they work directly with Oregon Food Bank and these, you know, Monday food banks all throughout the year have been a, a tremendous success and, and impact on the community. It's, it's really been something that was a need that hadn't been met and what perfect timing, you know, with this pandemic happening that these families really needed it. So our uh, member here, Gwen Hollinger, she is an art teacher at the high school. Uh, she also is the head of the food pantry when that was in person, as well as the interact advisor. So thank you to that group. On top of that, we had uh, several members from the satellite uh, membership came and, and put together this grant um, that the district matched and spent $4,000. So the first Monday of the month from February through June, they offered household cleaning items, toiletries, those types of things that aren't covered with um, 
the other food items, but definitely necessary to keep, you know, sanitary conditions in our homes during this time. So thank you to the committee for, for putting that together. We had the community service committee uh, also uh, apply for a grant that was in addition to that supported by Allstate Insurance through Janet Peters. And they worked over at Rogers Park to put in um, some picnic tables that are ADA compliant. They a new barbecue, a gaming table. And this is, you know, at the same time that Anna and Abby's yard opened. So what a wonderful thing to, to add to our community. And, and in a time where we can't do many things, but we can go outside and go to the park. So it really worked out to be like the perfect community service project for this year. Hope for the holidays. And in spite of all the you know, restrictions, we help more families than ever this year. Um, all the volunteers worked so hard to shop with families. We had more than 20 families, was it Claudia? Yeah, we actually had uh, close to 40 because we uh, ended up uh, reducing uh, the 500 to 250. So we were able to help um, double what we normally do. So it was amazing. That's right. Thank you. That's I remember we decided that the need was so great. Instead of helping fewer families with a big gift card, let's help more families with the 250. But, um, you know, there was just a, a tremendous amount of families that were helped. Um, moving on to that. Um, Boy Scout Troop 213, um, you know, they hadn't had their fundraiser, the tree sale for several years there and that really hurt them. Um, and in spite of the recession, they were able to bring back that, uh, that tree sale, they made some money. And so hopefully they'll be able to go on um, some scouting trips this weekend. Wanted to give a shout out to Scoutmaster Rocky Brown. He has been the Scoutmaster for Troop 213 for many years. Um, he is now retiring from that, um, but he's helped many scouts, you know, with, go all the way to Eagle Scout with their project. I don't know how many Eagle Scouts this troop has turned out, but it's a considerable number. I wanted to recognize the foundation giving of this club. Uh, the annual fund was received over $10,800 from our members this year. The goal was 9,500. Uh, Polio Plus, uh, they contributed 3835 uh, versus the $3,000 goal. Um, there's 14 members are on Rotary Direct, meaning they automatically give. You can sign up to give monthly, once a year, twice a year, quarterly, however you wanna do it. But it automatically comes out of your account. Um, and 34 members gave $20 or more. So just to be clear, uh, Rotary International, the ask is that every Rotarian give $100 every year. And that's um, based off of, so this annual fund goal is based off of our membership numbers. So if our goal was 9,500, that means at the beginning of the Rotary year, we had 95 members. And that's how that goal is set. Um, so of the 10,800 goal that we um, achieved, that was, achieved by 34 members giving. So we can do better. Um, I think all of us can, can spread it out a little more and, and just keep going, but how generous in a recession year to have exceeded our giving. Mike Yakos, did you want to say anything about the foundation? Just uh, uh, echo what you already stated that, you know, big thanks to uh, everybody in the club I, I don't know how many years it's been since we've met this goal, but it's, it's definitely been many years. And this is just the latest that not only have we met our goal, but um, we really exceeded it and, and met it the earliest that I can remember us ever meeting in, in, a, in a recession COVID year, like you mentioned. So, um, you know, really, uh, really many thanks to the club. I, I think we knocked this one out of the park this year. Agreed. And thank you, Mike, for being the chair. You did a great job of communicating and reminding and asking. And I think a lot of times when, you know, we wanted to help, whether it was help first responders with meals or help with, you know, the hope for the holidays, it's, you know, you want to know what can we do? Well, one of the things you can do is give because you know, when you give to Rotary, the money just doesn't fly off to the abyss. The money actually goes to service projects. Um, and that's what Rotary is known for. We don't have this tremendous overhead 
where a lot of the money gets um, spent. It goes right to the service projects. And Paul Harris Fellows, uh, we have the pins and hopefully those are getting distributed, but I wanted to recognize um, those who achieved a new Paul Harris this year. And that's Blake Tim with a Paul Harris Fellow plus two. We have Janine Morrell with Paul Harris plus six. Tim Pearson, Paul Harris plus four. Uh, same for myself, Paul Harris plus four. Tom Ray, Paul Harris plus seven. Jeffrey Hoyt, Paul Harris plus five. And Andrea Stewart, Paul Harris plus one. So congratulations to, to all of you. Um, and each Paul Harris is, is calculated by every thousand dollars that you give within a single rotary year. Um, and this is as of about a week ago. Um, so thank you to all of you. Um, this definitely helps to uh, contribute to our, our foundation giving goals and allows us to apply for these matching grants. Whoopsie, went ahead. There we go. All right, uh, we actually eradicated polio in Nigeria this year. So I don't know if you remember, but this is many, many months ago that this happened. And a lot has happened since then with this COVID year, but let's not forget what a big deal this is to eradicate polio in Nigeria. So well done Rotary. And thank you to all of you who contribute to Polio Plus uh, because that work has continued and it makes a big difference. So we assembled desks for kids. So early on in the pandemic, one of the things we found was everyone had to homeschool their kids. There wasn't any choice and a lot of families just did not have a space dedicated for kids being able to, to do their schoolwork. Um, Blake, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, I know you had involvement with this. Absolutely. So what the schools were preparing for as well is when they got to the point of being back in uh, hybrid learning where students were coming into the school two days a week that they that the health guidelines weren't going to allow for uh, students to be placed at tables. So think about pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, some first grade where uh, students would normally be at tables as opposed to individual desks. And obviously that wasn't going to work. So uh, Cornelius Elementary School bought a, uh, a large number of desks. I think it was already on 200 uh, individual desks with the idea of being having those ready for when hybrid education was going to happen because honestly they didn't know when hybrid education was going to start until really about two weeks before things got going in early March. So uh, we went in and uh, assembled a, a, a number of desks. Uh, the Daybreak Club went in and as assembled a number of desks too and between the two clubs and a couple other service organizations uh, we got those 200 desks assembled and uh, they are, they're actually still being used right now. There's some summer school going on at Cornelius, uh, some, you know, some extra help uh, going on to help kids get ready for the fall. So, uh, so the work we did there has made a big difference for uh, school kids in Cornelius. Thank you, Blake. And so well done, everyone. Um, it's just another service project that, you know, we participated in that helped the community. Let's see, the scholarship committee. Sorry, some of these graphics, when I cut them, paste them, and then they blow up, they are, are a little blurry. You can see 2021 is significantly reduced to where we've been at for our scholarship giving compared to other years. But let's keep in mind that we did not have a Concord, which is not just the major fundraiser, it is the fundraiser that funds scholarships. So in spite of not having that, uh, we were still able to provide scholarships for, for students. Um, Andrea, or I'm sorry, uh, Sharon, are you on the call? I don't think she's on, uh, but thank you to Sharon and the scholarship committee for the work that they've done. They really worked with the schools to try to get, uh, you know, as many applicants as, as we possibly can. Uh, we had fewer this year than in past years, which, is unfortunate, but sort of worked out since we didn't have the same level of funding. But they do a wonderful job, and um, you know, students from Banks and Forest Grove um, school districts received uh, scholarships this year. Roadside cleanup. 
we still did roadside cleanup. Luckily, the pandemic didn't prevent this from happening. Um, you can see we had several different uh, uh, weekends where we were able to, to get out there and, and take care of the roads. This is a project that's been going on 27 or 28 years at this point. Does anyone know? Okay, so we'll move on to the gardens. Um, the gardening committee did a fabulous job this year partnering with a nursery to not only redesign the, the garden, but to put in some a mix of annuals and perennials. And what that's gonna mean is that year round, it's gonna look a little bit nicer because not everything will die, but then some of those will also come back. So there'll be less to in, uh, investment each year. Uh, it'll be really exciting to see how, how it, you know, plays out going forward. And um, you can see everyone came out, had a great time. I know they had a lot more work this year with, with ground prep, but uh, what a beautiful thing to drive by and see. We still got together with Thirsty Thursday for, with satellite members, uh, for fellowship, also for programs for new member inductions. Um, this happened at, I think this first one, this is uh, at Juanita Lentz Winery. Um, this was in the late summer or fall. Uh, we've also had a few others where we were at McMinimums. Uh, I know we've had David Hill, we've had Zesty Carts. Uh, we've done a great job continuing to try to get together in a, in a distance and, and safe manner. We golf. We did have our golf tournament uh, and we're, we're planning the new one, as Tim Showerman said, for August 11th. And we'll make this an in-person meeting I'm, I'm sure they're gonna have a great program lined up. It'll be a fundraiser uh, and it'll be, you know, just one of those normal things like we used to do. And classics on Main. Now this is a really exciting and interesting take on a Concours. Um, this is what we wish we could have done last year as well. We're, I think just hanging on at the last minute, still hoping we can put on an actual show. Um, Ryan, I think you joined us. Did you wanna say anything about the Classics on Main this year. Sure, yeah. Um, we're looking forward to having at least, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we're looking forward to having at least something uh, for the car owners and give us a little bit of breathing room for that budget that some of us worked on earlier. Um, essentially, we're going to have 50 cars that are going to take up Main Street from Pacific Ave down to roughly Par Lumber. And they're gonna be there for a couple hours and then head on out to do a tour down to the Brothers Museum down um, outside of Salem. And at the same time, we're gonna have some cars lined up on 21st and they're going to be our cars that are just really hanging out for the day. It'll be about another 30, 35 cars or so. Um, and we're trying to get some involvement from the community. So I have letter, a letter that I'll be delivering to the local businesses on Friday morning giving them the chance to put in flyers or coupons or whatever they want to try to get business owner or to try to get the car owners to come to the businesses, which will be fun too. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think it'll be great for our club to have some kind of major event there. That's great. That's exciting. And thank you to the Concord committee. They've still been meeting year round and have done a tremendous job. And, and they're also expecting that this uh, event will raise some money. Uh, so that's wonderful too. Um, so thank you to all of you. And, and it'll be really great too, just to see another event happening in the community, kind of feel like everything's coming back, you know, slowly but surely. Let's see. Well, this year we learned how to Zoom. I know we started at the end of last year, but this year we got really good at it. So let's uh, keep in mind, we Zoomed with another club, the Rotary Club of Camarillo. And that was where we had the NASA engineer talk to us about the Marv Rover, or Mars Rover. Uh, we also had the gentleman that Zoomed in. He was our speaker and he was uh, actually in Ireland at the time. Um, and then of course, all of us have, have We've seen each other's living rooms and offices and, and vacation homes. So, um, you know, we've, we've, we've made it work. It's kind of become something that's an acceptable, you know, way to meet. And, and there might be some people that still prefer this way, uh, you know, going forward. Wanted to say uh, thank you to our district governor, Joe Crenshaw. Uh, she had a tough year. You know, one of the things that a district governor does is that they go and 
attend a meeting in person, every single club in their district. And so those district governors really missed out on, on you know, that personal contact and getting to know him. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get to know Joe though this year because um, our club's Claudia Yakos was the chair of the district conference. And this is the third year of chairing that conference, but uh, I helped out with that. So we got to uh, be involved. And, and if you had a chance to attend the district conference, there's some wonderful speakers and those speakers, um, their programs are recorded and are available to, to use uh, Andy Andrews was a tremendous motivational speaker. And it wasn't specific to Rotor, it was just specific to, to finding that motivation and inspiration for yourself, for your why in your life. Um, and anyhow, so there, there's some resources there available at the district. So we wanted to recognize our very own shelter box ambassadors. And not only are they just amazing individuals and Rotarians, but the US government um, and Shelterbox awarded the President's Volunteer Service Award in recognition to their work as ambassadors for Shelterbox. So it was a really big deal. And I wish that we were in person more to kind of really just hype how, how important that that recognition was. And of course they don't do it for the recognition. So, um, you know, it might not be that big of a deal to them, but it, it should be noted that uh, we're very fortunate to have so many wonderful, caring, giving, and hardworking service people in our community. We adapted and uh, adopted some committees. So we've had our We Care Committee, uh, but Paul Water Street's kind of taken that to the next level with this phone tree. And if you remember that started out at the beginning of the pandemic and then during the wildfires, just to make sure that everyone was accounted for and looked after. Um, you know, some of the Rotarians may have been really isolated or lived alone or lost you know, power or cell service or wasn't able to go grocery shopping. You know, Paul put together a way for all of us to kind of look out for one another. And I really think that was an important thing to do. Um, he also does recognize the birthdays and anniversaries. And that's a fun thing to hear just to kind of get to know each other a little bit more on a personal level when you've been you know, married for this many years or you've been in Rotary for that many years. So thank you to the We Care Committee for doing that. And then also to our, our diversity, our DEI committee. Um, it's a new undertaking. It's you know, already had some good discussions. Some speakers have come out of it. A survey has come out of it. And it'll be exciting to see how that's included in, in our meetings and, and our direction going forward. This seems like a really long time ago, but if you remember at the end of the summer last year, those portable showers that we contributed to. They were short some funds and the funds that our club donated, put them over the top. The shower was completed and it's in our community uh, a couple of days a week. And think about from that time to now, how many more homeless are actually residing in our community and benefiting from this. Um, you know, just offering the ability to, to bathe, you know, can really help with, you know, the dignity side of being homeless. And it, it was really well-timed that the club was able to help fund this. So in all the fundraising that we do, let's not forget that we had the wreath sale that we did. And thank you to uh, Melinda Fisher and Janet Peters and those involved with that. Um, the giving we did with polio, all the steak sales that we did uh, and those involved with that March who always showed up to collect money as well as Lucas to run credit cards, Jeff Dyke for sourcing the meat and, and just always helping us out in any way you can. Uh, the Blooming Hill Vineyard, you know, being able to sell the wine, um, you know, that was, that was a favor. That was an ask that, you know, if they're not going to use it all, can we sell it? Can we make some money on it? I mean, we asked them and, and they provided. Um, the March Madness, uh, I think if we were in person, we might have done a little more. And I think we're going to keep that going. And, and Lucas has got some great ideas for kind of elevating some of these fundraisers. Um, the Hope for the Holidays. And then um, just all the foundation giving. And almost last but not least is the visioning facilitation workshop. So this was something that Rotary, the district provides um, to help our club come up with 
consensus goals. So consensus meaning we're moving in the same direction together. We're moving forward. And we've had a lot of change over the last six, eight years. Um, and then now in the last 12 months, we've had sudden <laughs> and drastic change. Um, it's time to, to have another visioning. And, and we just recently held that. It's given the, the new leadership that's coming in and the next several presidents um, meeting to hone in on those goals that they really want to focus on. Those things will impact um, funding for different committees, um, the types of, of meetings that are held, um, all sorts of things. So that was a really important thing to do. And, I, and thank you to all those who participated and Bryce for insisting that we do it before the end of the year. And finally, uh, I want to thank uh, all of those who are stepping up to be our leaders coming up for the 2021-22 Rotary Year, Rotary International President-Elect Shikar Medha. Uh, I saw a, a message from him. What a, what a dynamic Rotary International President he will be. In District 5100, our new district governor is Jim Boyle. And he is just a, a great dynamic speaker as well. And Janine, I apologize because I know we've retired, or you have a different title than district governor assistant. It's like district governor, right hand, something, something. But technically, she, technically I'm called the administrative assistant governor, okay. but Jim calls me the chief of staff. That's what it was, chief of staff, thank you. And I, I have no doubt you will be the chief of staff. Uh, we've also got an assistant governor, which will be Tom Rabe, and he'll be covering this area to, to assist and support um, Bryce. And that really, the assistant governors, I didn't really understand what they did. I thought they assisted the district governor, but no, they really support the presidents. Um, and uh, our shelter box ambassador, Janine Morrell, and shelter box ambassador, Pamela Jean Meyer. So these individuals, you know, have, are going to be, you know, helping with the district level as leaders, but they're also members of our club. So we've got uh, just tremendous movers and shakers in, in our club for this next Rotary year. Um, the Rotary Club exec board, um, we've got Bryce Baker is your new president. Uh, President-elect Janet Peters. I'll be the immediate past president. Uh, secretary, I believe, is Claudia Yakos and Treasurer Lucas Welliver. Uh, fundraising Treasurer Jim Crisp. And Satellite Membership Director is Mike Yakos. I think we're still working on how to transition directors. Um, it's hard when you have a smaller group to get someone else to trans uh, transition in, so there might be more of a mentorship looking forward. So I wanted to um, thank all of you and really just kind of recap that, you know, I don't want to discount any individual's contribution to the year, but I just didn't feel like spending any money or, or awarding individuals is what we needed. I needed to remind all of you why you're still part of this club is that even when we can't get together and when we are, you know, reduced and, and, um, limited by our fundraising, this club has had a tremendous pack, impact on the community and in the world this year. So thank you to all of you. And um, I look forward to passing the gavel to Bryce. So Bryce, when I see you again, as is tradition, I had a gavel with your president year and your name made up. And this along with the bell, which I never did use, will be yours. So thank you all. Mm. Julia, well done. I'd yes. like to uh, take a moment here to recognize you for the just a tremendous job that you did during your year, during a, a very challenging time. I don't have to remind you uh, what we, we all went through, but you in particular, you uh, really exemplified what Rotary stands for during difficult times under pressure and uh, you, you did it with, with grace, you did it with courage and uh, you, you really did a terrific job and we just love seeing your, your positive attitude and, and your awesome smile. So <laughs> thank you, thank you for uh, such a wonderful year. Um, 
on behalf of the, the club, as well as your past president, it's my honor to present you with uh, the theme on a tile on this uh, beautiful rosewood uh, uh, plaque, of course it has your name and thanking you for uh, doing such a wonderful job and your dedication and leadership during your year, Julia. Aww, so thank, thank you so you. much. Okay. Thank you. And, and I'd like to just add um, some data to our club that, again, I echo exactly what Tim said. It's it's just been such a delight to support Julia and to be part of this amazing club. Our data shows that we had, um, we did lose some members. We, we had seven loss, but we had six gains. And, you know, we are definitely super excited and inspired to move forward with the work that Julia has done. But, you know, this is no small feat. You know, our average, um, I was just looking at reports, our average for the year attendance um, in a year when clubs have lost 50% of their membership, we've been averaging close to 50% attendance. So that is um, all due in part with thinking outside of the box, which is what our club does so well and why we're such, you know, front runner leaders, you know, for our district is just really thinking outside of the box. And, you know, we have just decreased in spending, but increased, you know, the way that we are bringing in funds. So Julia, congratulations. This has been, you know, such a wonderful year. You've led us through this entire year, just making such a difference. Um, I, I'm personally really bummed that we didn't get like a little more interaction, but you're here to stay. So um, just really, really super proud of everything that happened this year. I'm so proud to be a, a club member and then just good job, everyone, for showing up and, you know, reaching out. Paul, you know, keeping us connected has been amazing. So it's just been a team effort. I just love the way that you recapped your year. It's been fantastic. And it's so you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank well, you. again, Julia's Julia's leadership really uh, shined through for us here this year, and I I know that a lot of the club membership, especially leaders, leadership, understand what it takes to 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 lead a club, uh, especially like ours. But uh, boy, Julia, you, you you need to make sure that you uh, you know take Remember some pride money? in what you accomplished during a difficult time. I mean, you we met all of our goals. You know, the club, you got our citation this year. I mean, awesome. Good job. Thank you. And, and I will point out, though, that, I mean, at the end of the previous Rotary year, you know, Tim had to figure out how to Zoom, how to how to take us from our the meetings that we knew, you know, where our biggest challenge before was are we meeting upstairs or downstairs, to, to not meeting at all and figure out what is Zoom and how do you do it. And then getting us all convinced that we should try it. I just had to step in and keep that going. I was hoping we'd come back, but we didn't. And now Bryce is gonna have to figure out how to bring us back. So really, you know, Tim, I, I kind of coasted through a year where the people, my, my predecessor and, and, and the one following, they're really the ones that need our support now. Is that, you know, when Bryce is gonna figure out if we can zoom at this location, you know, we might have a Wi-Fi glitch. We might have to, you know, might take a couple of tries to, to get it right, but I know we will, but, you know, please just keep doing everything that you're doing. That's why you're in Rotary. That's why you are who you are. And, you know, let's turn it over to Bryce here shortly and let's see if he has a few words for us and what to expect from, uh, for the new Rotary year. Thank you, Julia. I, I have to echo everything that, Tim and Claudia said as well, just uh, I don't think anyone would ever refer to your year as having any sort of coasting <laughs> at all. Uh, everything was hard. Everything was more complicated than it's been in the past. And uh, the state of the club that we're in uh, now just speaks to the leadership and, and not just everything that, that Julie has done, but the, the structure of our club and the foundation of leadership that we've had for years now. Uh, made made a big difference to get us where we are, and you know I'll just briefly say where we're going is to the new Rotary, to a, a club that uh, embraces everyone in our community who has a heart for service, and uh, everyone who wants to build that community 
and be a part of a better, stronger Forest Grove um, is welcome. And so that's not just Forest Grove, that's Gaston and Cornelius and all our surrounding communities as well. So uh, it is going to be a process getting back to this new normal, but we have great people in our club who are going to help me get there. I don't feel alone at all moving into this uh, position and your support, everyone's support. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with you and uh, it's going to be a great year. Thank you, Bryce. And thank you to all of you.